Yo, what is up YouTube? Another week, another VCT talk and this week was spicy again. From world champions joining the most clouded team up to Boaster providing the dumbest league in a month and the Pacific region who is taking a different approach. Let's jump right into it. By the way guys, if you enjoy my weekly VCT coverage and you would like to stay up to date, make sure to subscribe to my channel as you can expect more in-depth videos and shorts covering the most recent news. First things first. What was speculation as of last week is now official. Sassy and Pancada join Sentinels and Tense remains on the team as the superstar. In my very first VCT talk, I mentioned that I hope that Sentinels can fix their relationship with the Brazilian fans after their Twitter fiesta back in the days. And I surely think they did. As far as it goes for Tense, I really do hope that he can strive in this environment of players who have already proven themselves throughout the last season. With players like Sassi on the team and a coach like Siku who help Cryo to shape up in a way which is needed for a modern Valorant player, I do think that the 2023 season will be the most important one for Tense. And I do hope that he can prove to be one of the best, but he must show it now. Besides that? The America's roster shuffle was a bit boring. EG remains doing nothing and we probably must wait for another week to see more moves, so on to the next topic. Moving over to EMEA, we get actually a lot of new rumors and something I would call a confirmation. Boaster, the legendary IGL of Fnatic, was back at it again with a social media hit. This time it wasn't for a dance or a song, but rather for an absolute stupid leak which he deleted shortly after posting. The Fnatic roster is currently in Egypt to play in the Superdome tournament from the 16th to the 22nd of October alongside Ascent and other teams. On a casual sightseeing trip to the pyramids, Boaster posted some cheeky photos in which one of them appears to be Leo, the Swedish prodigy currently under contract for Guild who's rumored to join Fnatic. Well, I would say this is confirmed now and we might see him debut in Egypt, so Boaster, you're a legend for this one, thank you. <laughs> Regarding roster updates and news, I really do have to shout out two persons here. First off, Fly and Anne from Brazil, who is doing the most insane roster sheets ever, which probably is the biggest source of news for all of us here. He actually updates those daily sheets and this is just insane. Thank you for securing my job, Fly and Anne. On the other hand, I want to thank Lambo, who just confirmed some of the hottest rosters for the initial roster lock, which was on the 15th of October. Let's quickly jump over those first locked rosters and let me tell you my first impression of those. Let's start off with Koi. Coldementer, Starzo, Wolfen, Shados and Trax, coached by Barber, the former guild coach. This team honestly could be one of the dark horses of the EMEA league simply by the potential of this team. I rate Coldementer super highly. He proved himself in literally every team he played for, but honestly, the player to watch out for here is probably Wolfen, who was one, if not the upcoming player from the latest VLR season. So my hype meter is pretty high. Fnatic. Boaster, Durke, Alfie, Leo and Chronicle coached by Mini. Well, not much to say really, besides this might be the best team in EMEA just by the first glance. In my honest opinion though, I kind of wonder how Leo and Chronicle will fit in Rollwide though. But I trust Boaster and Mini that they will have a plan in mind, so I'm super hyped for that team. Giants, Fitinho, Cloud and Rhyme. <laughs> Honestly, I think this team can perform decent since I rate Fitinho and Cloud pretty highly, but I doubt that this team can challenge the top, so I'm rather not so hyped. On to Liquid on the other hand. Yumpy, Soulcast, Nats, Safe, Redka. This team on paper looks similar to Fnatic when we talk about firepower and talent. For me, ultimately, the results of this team will come down to the synergy between those five and how much Redka will be affected by IGLing in English instead of Russian. But I do believe they can make it work. Easily a top 3 team in EMEA and I'm super hyped for Team Liquid in 2023. Next up, Heretics, Mixwell, Kallax, Evova, what the heck? This is literally the former G2 roster which did not work for a number of reasons. What has changed that this might work now? I really do not understand this at all, especially the role conflicts between Mixwell and Kallax, but time will tell I guess. But this just sparks question marks in my head, so I'm not so hyped. Next up, Vitality. Sander, Destrian, Molzy, Twist and Bonecold, coached by Salah. I know that people will look at those names and be like, who are those guys? But honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if this team finishes top 3 in EMEA. Twistin is an insane duelist who played for Big, 
Destrian and Molzy been essential part for the success of Oglur in the run before champions, and those guys are teaming up again with their former coach Salah, who turned Oglur into a dark horse. The IGL is Bonecold, who is a world champion and helped Vitality to reach the finals of the latest VLR season. I know that people won't agree with me here, but honestly, watch out for this team. They got nothing to lose and a lot to prove. I'm super hyped for them. Next up, Navi. Angel, Zipan, Shao, Sugatsu, and Zenet. I gave my opinion on this potential lineup last week and I still think this team on paper is a top 3 in my books alongside Team Liquid and Fnatic, just by the names. Next up, the Pacific region. A region I really do not understand as of now, but we know that DRX and PaperX are pretty much set and ready to go. I really do not understand what will happen with other teams. A lot of those teams actually posted some invites to open recruitments, which I really don't understand and I really don't know what to think about. The most striking point here is this one, for example, where Gen G looks out for players which are immortal one or higher. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm all in for equal chances, but if you build a team out of a bunch of immortal one players from the Pacific region, I highly doubt that you're taking it serious with all my respect. I really do hope that this is more of a nice gesture rather than a true approach of those orcs and that we will see truly competitive rosters from the Pacific region in the 2023 season. On to the last topic, which most of you probably never even thought about as of now. The assistant coach of Oglu, Bambino, tweeted a statement about the roster construction rules which orcs must follow when they build a roster. As most of you might know, there are certain rules like minimum contract length or minimum salary which are in place to issue some sort of security to players and staff members. But apparently, this does not apply to anyone but the starting roster and the head coach. And if you read the thread by Bambino, you can see that it is sadly the standard to commit wage theft and underpay analysts and coaches and this will remain possible through the 2023 season due to the fact that the roster construction rules doesn't apply to all of the staff's members. I cannot change this, but I do hope that we can spread awareness of this and help people to receive a fair payment for their work. Alright guys, this has been it for this week of VCT Talk. Remember to like and subscribe if you did enjoy this video. And by the way guys, I will start posting more in-depth shorts and videos on roster moves once the database will release. So let's stay in touch and until next week. Thank you for watching.